Right, today I'm going to look at, uh, I've been requested by my A-level students to look at, and uh, also suggested by myself, because this is quite a difficult area, is to look at integration involving trig identities um, and integration by substitution. So on the board I've already pre uh, obviously written this out now to save a bit of time here. I uh, just want to talk through um, the various identities here. So you should know from your AS course that sine squared plus cos squared is always 1. Okay. And then if you take the reciprocal of sine, cosine and tan, so cosec is 1 over sine A. You know how to learn that as the third letter in cosec is S, which matches the sine there. The third letter in sec represents the first letter of cos, so sec is A is cos over 1 over cos A. Cot A, third letter is T, so that's 1 over tan A. So from that, I can generate two more identities from sine squared plus cos squared is one. That means, by the way, sine A all squared. I'll just write that at the top here. That means sine A all squared. It's just a notation for that. Okay. Um, and now, if you divide all that by cos squared, sine over cos gives you tan. Should know another identity you should know. Okay. I'll just write that at the top here. Tan A is the same as sine A over cos A. And then so if you square it all then you get tan squared A. Cos squared divided by itself, and if you divide itself is 1. 1 over cos A is sec A. You square it, so it's sec squared A. I can also generate, that's, the, that's very useful, used a lot in uh, solving trigonometric equations and also uh, for um, uh, using identities to be able to make integrations easier. If you now divide all that by sine squared A, sine squared divided by itself gives you 1. Cos squared over sine squared, well cos over sine is 1 over tan, yeah, the way around, the reverse of that, 1 over tan, and you square it, so it's 1 over tan squared, which is, because 1 over tan is cot, so that's going to be cot squared A. And uh, if you divide that by, um, so if you divide this by sine squared there, you get 1 over sine, which is uh, cosec, square it, so cosec squared A. Again, in the blue boxes there, and I suggest there, key um, identities you need to know, okay? Another one you need to know which crops up a lot is if you take the double angle formula, so if you take sine 2a, it's the same as 2 sine a cos a. Now, you learn that, but to show you how you generate it, if you take your addition formulas, which in your form book, which is sine a plus b is all that, if you make a and b the same, so call them all a, that will become 2a, the b's will be changed to a because they're the same, and you get sine a cos a plus cos a sine a, which is the same like terms, and you get 2 sine A cos A. Another identity which is useful is cos 2A is the same as cos squared A minus sine squared A. Again, you can learn that. How you generate it is go to the other addition form of a cos, because I'm leading with cos. Cos A plus B is actually cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. Again, let A equal B, so call them all A. That becomes cos 2A. Make them change the B's to A, that becomes cos A cos A minus sine A sine A. Times it by itself creates the square, so you get cos squared A minus sine squared A. Now, these two in the boxes are, are very important to help you to, well, to help you to integrate, sorry, for differentiating uh, sine squared, cos squared, or differentiate and integrating cos squared and sine squared A. And the way to do it, if you want to remove, let's say we want to remove the cos squared from that, all right? Now, using sine squared plus cos squared is one, which is the, what we've got at the top there. If you rearrange that, we can replace cos squared by 1 minus sine squared A. Yeah, so we replace that by 1 minus sine squared A. You've got the minus sine squared. And if you rearrange that, obviously that becomes minus 2 sine squared A. Rearrange it, you will get that. Similarly, if you do it the other way around and remove the sine squared, take the sine squared out of that, well, if you rearrange that for sine squared A, you get 1 minus cos squared A. So if you now replace that by 1 minus cos squared A, it's cos squared um, A minus all of that, so you need all means brackets, 1 minus cos squared A, multiply the brackets out, and then if you rearrange it and make cos squared A the subject, you get this result. Now I've got the similarity between those two there. Cos squared A is 1 plus cos 2A all over 2, sine squared A is 1 minus cos 2A all over 2. So they're the same by the signs in the middle there. So they are uh, useful identities. Now obviously I obviously need the rest of the board, so I'm going to remove those now and obviously we'll be using them, so when I'm bringing them up in, in the questions I'm talking about, you will know where I've got those from, or you can go back through my uh, video and see that. So if I just remove that quickly. 
the toilet cleaner. Right, okay, so a few, few, few things first. Your form looks also important. For example, in the differentiation side, you'll have f of x, okay, and f dash of x, which means the derivative or it's been differentiated. Now, one of the formulas in there has got tan kx, and that goes to k sec squared kx, all right? So you've got to learn your form rule. So you can use your form rule in the two ways. If you want to differentiate functions, you get that. If you integrate that, you get back that. That may well be on the integration side of the things anyway. There's formulas for that. But you can work backwards off that because the inverse of differentiation is integration. Now, you make k equal 1 there, keep it simple. Then you know if you take tan x, you get k as 1. That becomes 1 sec squared 1 x, which goes simply down to sec squared x. So the differential of tan x goes to um, sec squared x, Okay, which means uh, if you integrate sec squared x, you get tan x, okay? So these are little formulas, so it's important to use your formula book. Another little area, and it should be in most formula books, uh, if you, it's not actually directly there, but in the further mass area, under matrices, and it's got nothing to do with this, you've got a matrix which looks like this, cos theta, using angle theta there, minus sine theta, and we've got um, sine theta, cos theta. Now, it's got nothing to do with differentiation or integration, but you can use it because you could call that f of theta, that call that f dash of theta, and you can see the derivatives are there. If you differentiate cos theta, you get minus sine theta, which is correct. If you differentiate sine theta, you get cos theta, okay? And then if you integrate minus sine theta, you get cos theta. If you integrate cos theta, you get sine theta. So they're the useful little tools. They're not directly under the, the, the course content of your exam. But so they're in the further mass area, which is useful. So use the, use the uh, former book efficiently there. Um, what you can do to these little bits there, you could times that by minus one. That will then, that top one will then become minus cos theta. That will become sine theta. And that means that the integral of sine theta is minus cos theta plus the constant of integration on the end there. You can do that with any, and you can multiply, divide it by a constant number. It's got to be constant numbers there, okay? And another little result coming from all of that is there's a, what I call the linear trick, yeah? Save you a lot of time, shortcut. And the little shortcut here is this. For example, if I want to differentiate uh, cos 2x plus 1, notice that's linear. It's a linear function. Well, the trick is, what does cos di di differentiate to? So if that's y, then dy by dx would be, well, cos goes to minus sine, so we know it goes to minus sine. Put the linear thing back in. This is like a shortcut to the chain rule, basically. And then, basically, you times by the coefficient of x every time. You always times for differentiation. So that becomes minus 2 sine 2x plus 1. Okay? All right, on that one there. So you get there, and um, you could work backwards by integrating that to get to that. Now, when you integrate and go backwards, which I'm going to do here, you'll end up dividing by the 2 instead of times in by the 2. So that brings another shortcut result now. So if I remove that, and let's say I wanted to integrate cos theta. Well, if you integrate cos theta with respect to theta, you get sine theta. I could call it x, I'll just use theta because I've just got it in that matrix there. If I now make that linear and call it cos, I don't know, um, let's change it to x, let's call it 3x plus 1. What does that go to? Well, we know cos goes to sine, so it goes to sine 3x plus 1. This is a, this is a trick for uh, shortcut, okay, for linear um, composite function. That means functions inside, yeah, which they are, the 2x, 3x plus 1 is inside the cos there. And what you do, it goes to sine. But what you do, instead of times in by the 3, you now divide by the 3. So the little trick is if you're integrate, differentiating your times by the coefficient of x, if you're integrating, you divide by it, and obviously you put your plus c on there. And that's how you can utilise your formula book and, and build in all sorts of things on that. Um, okay. Um, right, let's get this going then. Let's look at the two things I'm going to look at. So the first thing I'm going to look at for the first part of this video is integrations, yeah, using 
identities. Okay, integrations using identities. Okay, so I'll just pause on the board here. So let's take this. So I want to integrate sine square x. Well, I said integrating. If you were differentiating, you could use the chain rule, which is used for differentiating. You could use, write sine x, sine x, and use the product rule, but you've got to integrate it here. Well, there's something I said on the early part of the video. What you do is replace sine squared x by 1 minus cos 2x all over 2. I'd learn that if it was sine cos squared x, you'd do 1 plus cos 2x over 2. Now, what I tend to do is split the denominator or factorise the integral, take the half out, as long as you're around to multiply it back here, it just makes it a little bit easier inside here what you've got. Okay, now you need to integrate that. Again, you've got a linear bit inside, so that's that shortcut for me again. So what happens there? We well, get a half, put a bracket there, one goes to x, because if you differentiate x, you get back one, so that works. How do you get minus cos x? Okay, well we know from that uh, matrix there that uh, sine x differentiates to cos x, so therefore, cos x goes to sine x, yeah? But we've got minus cos x there. So if I times that by minus, or just leave the minus at the end, I'm going to times that by minus one actually there, but you could leave the, you could just do, you could just integrate the cos 2x and just put the minus on at the end just because it's a constant in front. So minus sine x would differentiate to minus cos x because I said earlier that you can multiply by any constants, it's stretching the graph, it's just a stretch factor. So now when you integrate minus cos x, respect to x, you get minus sine x. So therefore, what have I got here? Well, I've actually got minus cos 2x. You've got the minus cos x, we know it goes to minus sine. But because it's linear, that 2x stays as it, and you now divide by it, and then you put your plus c on the end, bring the half back in, and that gives you x over 2 minus sine 2x over 4 plus c. And there's the integration. Obviously, you need limits. The c disappears, becomes a definite integral, and you put your limits in there. We'll talk about limits later on. Other ones, so that's that one there. I'm just looking at all ones which require identities. Sometimes, I know it's not a trick, is if you've got, I'm not going to do this one, but if you've got a bracket and you need to square it out, then do it, and then hope that, that probably opens up the door to do your, your various integrations. Another one, um, now let's look at this one. Say I wanted to integrate sine 3x cos 3x dx. Now, where have you seen that before? Well, I've seen sine and cos go together, all that identity I was talking about earlier. Sine 2a is the same as 2 sine a cos a. So if you now match that up, okay, well, first of all, I need to divide by 2, so I've got it in the correct format. So you've got sine 2a over 2 is identically the same as sine a cos a. If you now match that up with what I've got there, I've got sine 3x cos 3x. So I knew it was that identity, simply because I've got a product of sine and cosine and the two angles are the same there. Now you can see it, and you can see that a must be 3x. So when I put the 3x back in there, 2 times 3x is going to give you sine 6x over 2. Do what I did earlier, take the half out, as long as you remember to put it back in. And now you need to integrate sine 6x, yeah? What does sine integrate to? Well, if you work backwards off your matrix, sine actually goes to minus cos, okay? So you get... Um, uh, my, uh, sine goes to uh, minus cos, as I said there, just double checking that, yes, it goes to minus cos, so that becomes a half, and then sine goes to minus cos, it's linear again in the middle, so that's 6x, it's meant to be an S, don't forget to divide by the coefficient of x, there's the shortcut, and then you've got it multiply it out, you've got minus cos 6x over 12 plus c, okay, on there, and that's another one involving identities again. Um, another one, one more, and then I'll move on to integration by substitution, which is a bit more complex, but uh, very useful as well. Um, okay, let's say I want to integrate tan squared x. First thing you might say, well, if it's going to be a big marker, three or four markers, it's no good consulting your form book. If the form is there, you're not going to get marks for just writing the form book. It's actually not there. So where have I used this before? Well, remember earlier what I put on the board. I said you had sine squared plus x plus cos squared x is always one. I call it a, but I'm changing it to x now. If you divide everything by cos squared, there's your tan squared coming in. Now tan squared x plus 1 is the same as sec squared x. If you now rearrange that to make tan squared the subject, you take one off both sides there, 
So therefore, not remember, I'm only changing it. I'm not actually integrating it. I'm changing it into a, a format so you can be able to do the integration. Now you can. Can you integrate sec squared x? Yes. Remember what I said earlier? If you've got f of x and f dash of x in your formable, tan x actually goes to sec squared x. Okay, on there. So therefore, sec squared x, that's differentiating, reverse it, sec squared integrate gives you tan x. So you get tan x, minus 1 goes to minus c, because if you differentiate minus x, you get minus 1, plus c, and you get the answer like that. Okay. And there's many, many other things you can do, but that's the, the important thing. So double loaded there, really. Main aim there was integration using identities, which I've done. Um, and also, um, uh, these can be used, some of these identities can be used in trigonometric equations, solving equations using trig as well. But obviously, I'm looking at integration to be able to break them down to formats. You can do it. Okay, something called integration by substitution. Okay, where have you seen that before? Well, we're integrating it, but remember what you did when you had to make a substitution when you were when you were differentiating. You were using the chain rule, let u equal something. Okay, this is very similar. It's the same idea, so it has the same principles. A bit harder now because you sometimes have to come up with a substitution. And hopefully during this video, I'll be able to make it a little bit easier. I'll look at all the, you know, the the harder questions involving which substitutions to use. Hopefully they give you them, and obviously the more complicated, um, they. Uh, hopefully we'll give you them on that one. Let's take some, so it's like that. Um, so let's look at the question. Okay, here we go. So let's say we're integrating cos x um, sine squared x. There is a shortcut to this, but I'd prefer not to do that. Now, there's two ways you could do it. Think about the chain rule. You let the function sign it. That looks right to me. So, oh, sine x all squared. So that's inviting me to put u as make a substitution. You remember I used the u when I was doing uh, chain rules, so I do it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let u equal sine x. Now there's two ways to do this. Some method, this is the first method here, so I'll go with this method one in all what I do, but I'm going to show you the other method as well, which takes much use as well. The first thing I do is rewrite that as dx du du. I'm introducing the substitution now. They cancel out, so I'm back to where I was at the start. Okay. Now, you've got to remember to do that though with this method. Okay, now, if I now do a du by dx here, that gives you, well, sine, what does sine go to? That goes to cos x. Now, I've got du by dx, and I want dx by du. There's another little result here, this. If you multiply, okay, if you multiply dx by du and times it by its reciprocal the other way around, you always get one. They cancel out, they cancel out. So what I've got there is this situation here. Uh, dx by du is what I want. So there's another usual result here. Times du by dx equals one. I've the same thing out, aren't we? Dx by du is equal to, that, that's the thing I'm after. Du by dx I've already got is cos x. So if you now rearrange that and divide both sides by cos x, you actually, to get the other one, simply you take the reciprocal of that. In other words, really that's like over one, swap it around, turn it around. So therefore, rather than go for all that there, I can just say, right, if that's du by dx, and that's the other way around, all you do is take the reciprocal of it, so dx by du is going to be one over cos x, okay? There, one over cos x. So I now put it in, hopefully, does what it does. We want to change everything into u. Well, cos x, the substitution is u equals sine, so I'll leave the cos x there, don't panic, because it might cancel, I hope it doesn't cancel, I'll have to go back to the substitution and put it back in again. That's going to be u squared, because I made u sine squared, u sine x, sorry. dx by the u is the reciprocal of that, so it's 1 over cos x, and then du, okay? And you get the cancelling going off there, yeah? And there's the cancelling, and now we're in. It's not been integrated, like just like the trig identity, it's a different way. You'd break it down into a new, uh, a new variable, u instead of x, to make it much easier, much more friendly to integrate. Now you know, standard result, add one to the power divided by the new power. Once that's done, put your u back in, which is sine x, and therefore you get sine cubed x over 3 plus c. Got you. Okay, and there's the answer. Now, what I just want to do is, Come in slightly different to which a lot of textbooks do. Do the same question again. Okay, so I've removed all that. Here. Let's say I don't do it that way. That's the way I'm going to do these. 
Okay, but let's do it another way there. So, same thing. I ask you to integrate that. They might not give you the substitution, so you'd have to come up with that, think about it. You know, sine and cos alternate each other, so it's not a shock that you're probably letting u equal sine x, like a function inside of a function, chain rule, similar to the chain rule, okay? And what I tend to do now is, I don't add that bit I did before, I just differentiate it now, so it takes away the, the reciprocal thing. Sine goes to cos, and what I do, I rearrange that, so I times both sides by dx, that gives you du equals uh, uh, cos x dx, what do I want? Well, I want the dx to be on its own, so I divide by cos x, and you get that, and the du over cos x is equal to uh, dx. Substitute the dx back in here, and you're left with cos x sine squared x, uh, dx is replaced by du over cos x, which is exactly the same as I did before, it's the one over cos x, so it's just the same method, it's just a different way of doing it, so you can do it from that, okay? All right, and then you integrate as before, I got the answer I got, okay? Right, let's look at other types, there's all different types, and we don't know what's going to come up in the actual um, exam. Okay, this one now, x root um, 2x plus 5 dx, so the first, I'm going to use that first method, so I'm going to write it as dx, du, du. So I'm adding on the du's, they cancel out, so it's still the same question. I mean, you've got to remember to do that though. If you want to do it the way, rearrange what I'm about to do. So, one of the substitutions, one of the ways you can do it is, it might give you this, u squared equals 2x plus 5. You might think, why u squared and not u? Well, you can actually do it two ways here. The reason is, when you put the, replace that u, 2x plus 5 with the u squared, the square root and the square cancel each other because they're inverses and it just removes it quicker, okay? The problem with that though, it's not in the correct format. It's in what we call implicit form at the moment. So what you could do, two ways of going to get this, you could either differentiate both sides. So if you do, if you differentiate both sides, so you differentiate that slide with respect to x, be careful you've got u squared, and differentiate all that with respect to x. This is called implicit differentiation. So it's another thing. Now you can't differentiate that with respect to x, but what you can do is you can differentiate it with respect to u, u, and then if you apply the chain rule, du by dx, you can see that cancelling out there, you're left with du squared over dx, which is a one. Now, you have to do all that, complicated there, makes it complicated, this is what, what's happening there. So one little trick for you, differentiate it as though it's respect to u, to u, and then just write du by dx at the end, yeah? Just stick that, so it's du by dx at the end, and that's just like me using the chain rule there. Differentiate that, you get two, that disappears, and if you rearrange that, you get du by dx equals two over two u, which you can cancel the twos off and get one over u. No way of doing that, so that's one way of doing it, okay? Um, another way of looking at that as well was to make x the subject, to reverse it. So if you took uh, five, because it's nice to rearrange it, sometimes you're gonna have to use this implicit way. Take the five off both sides, that leaves you with two x, divide by two, and you get u squared minus five all over two. Now if you split that off, you get u squared over two minus five over two. Now, because that's easy to rearrange on that one, if you now do a dx by the u, so I've gone the other way around, u squared differentiates to 2u over 2, the minus 5 over 2 disappears, and you're left with u. Now that is right, because that, dx, as I said earlier, dx by the u is the reciprocal of that. Turn it around, u over 1, so it's just the other way around there, okay? So, either way is fine from that. I'll go with the one I did there by the implicit, but see, it's up to you, okay? When I substitute that into here, what do we get? Well, we get x, mm, yeah. square root of, well, the 2x plus 5 is u squared. dx by the u, all right, careful, because the way I've gone, I've got du by dx, so turn it around that. So dx by the u, remember, is the reciprocal of that, so it's u, because if you times those two together, you get 1. So that gives you u, du. And then you've got x, square root of u squared is u, u times u, there's the u there, you've got that. So at the moment, I've got x u squared du. Well, oh no, it's not cancelled. I want it in terms of u. Well, the only way around to do that is go, when you get into, it can happen, 
is go back to your substitution and rearrange and make x the subject. So if you go back here, that will do u squared equals 2x plus 5. Take 5 off both sides, that gives you 2x, divide by 2, and you get u squared minus 5 all over 2 equals x. And then put it back into here. So you put it back into here, you get uh, u squared minus 5 over 2 times by uh, u squared du. And now we're in. Okay, we'll just go to the top of the board here. So I've got all that in there. I'll just have to take that bit off there, actually. And now what you've got to do, well, I'd take it like I did before. Again, the same consistency I'm using. Take the half out, okay? Multiply the bracket out. U squared times U squared is U to the four. Minus five times U squared is minus five U squared. And you've got that, which you need to integrate respect to U. Half goes there. Add one to the power, standard polynomial function right there the variable in the base, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power here, it's going to be 5, the 5 stays there, minus 5 times, add 1 to the power, u cubed, over 3, plus the c at the end, okay, and then we have to, I have to move this lot here, actually, I'll keep the substitution of that, and put it back into there, so that leaves you a u to the 5, bring the half across, that makes that a 10, that makes that 5u cubed over 6 plus c. And like with any integration, um, later on I'll explain to you if you've got limits, you can actually change the limits into x limits into u limits and keep it as that, because the c is not there. Or if you want to keep the original x limits, you, you have to change it back. If this is an indefinite integral, you need to change it back. Now here, how do I do that? Well, u squared is the square root of that, which is to the power half. That's what square root means. Put it back in here. That's 2x plus 5 to the power half to the power 5 all over 10. That's minus 5. 2x plus 5 to the power half. Yeah, and that's all being cubed. All over 6 plus c. Power on power e times. So you get 2x plus 5 to the 5 over 2 um, over 10 minus 5, 2x plus 5, power and power, you multiply again, power 5, um, 3 over 2, over 6, plus c, got you. And there we've got that. Now, that's, you know, sort of exhausted that particular example. But, you could have done that. This will also work, by the way, so I don't, I'm not going to do this now, but if you went back to the question I've just done, it actually works by letting, as you dx, letting u equal 2x plus 5, yeah? Okay, you could do it by that. If you're using my method here, I'd write that as dx, du, du. Or if you don't like doing that, get the du by x, rearrange it so dx is on its own and put it back into that. That will work. I'm not going to actually go into doing this. All right, my next question. Um, one of my A-level students suggested this. It's actually in the textbook, since found it, actually. And um, he was asking me um, the question about this. Um, and it was integrating sine cubed x. And the, the student actually did x really well here and come up with the answer as well. Okay? So I want to integrate that sine cubed x. Well, what you do is, first of all, I'm going to write it as dx du du. Some people won't. They'll not put that on and they'll rearrange for dx when I make this substitution. Now I'm going to let u equal cos x. You think, why? Because that's not matching that. Well, remember cos x and sin x are alternate each other when you differentiate them, so you get an opposite, and that's what will happen here. So if you do a du by the x here, what does cos go to? Well, cos goes to minus sign, use your formula book. Okay, now I've got a dx by the u the way I've done it, so I have to take the reciprocal of that. So it's going to be 1 over minus sin x, I like to have the minus at the bottom. So positive and negative, the opposite sign gives you a minus, so I might as well stick the minus to the top, who uh, looks conventionally better. And you've got that from there. Okay, and then you put your things in here. So you get sine cubed x, dx by the u is minus 1 over sine x, it's going to be cancelled in a minute, times du. Okay, now I can take the minus outside, the sines cancel. You need for a 2 there, so you're left with sine squared x du. You think, oh, I can't do it. Well, the identity is sometimes when you do integration by substitution, you've got to go back to the identity, and that very familiar one here, sine squared x plus cos squared x is always 1. So 
So if you rearrange that for taking off cos squared x from both sides, you get sine squared x is the same as 1 minus cos squared x. So if I now put that back in, don't forget there's a minus out there, you're left with 1 minus cos, cos squared x du. So I haven't got the u in yet, we have now, because we made u equal to cos x. So that becomes minus 1 minus u squared du. Okay, I'll just put the top off here. And if I now integrate that, leave the minus outside, put the brackets in because I'm about to integrate. 1 goes to u, because if you differentiate u, you get 1. Minus stays in the front, add 1 to the pi, that's a polynomial, divide by 3, plus you see on the end, float the minus through now, that gives you minus u plus u cubed over 3 plus c, plus c, just a constant, so just keep it a constant keep on that one. And then put your um, u back in on that one. So what was u? u was equal to um, cos x. So now put it back in there, you get minus cos x plus cos cubed x, which means cos x all cubed, over 3, plus c on there. And that should be, that's correct there, yeah. Okay, so, you know, watch for those ones as well. A bit more difficult if it had been anything higher than that. Um, if it had been a, a sign to the power of 4, that would have been more difficult there, yeah. But certainly those could come up into the exam there. Okay. There's loads of these that keep coming in, and everyone's different, and uh, they are very powerful and very quick if you can spot them. Hopefully they give you the substitutions, as I said before. Let's take, um, let's take this one, a bit of a messy one now. Sex squared, x, uh, tan x, square root of 1 plus tan x, and integrate that respect to x. Well, the first thing I do, put my colours here, is put a du, du underneath there, yeah? That cancelled out, so it's still the same question I'm introducing the substitution, yeah? Again, if you don't like to do that, then when I give you the substitution of it, which is, I'm gonna, they're gonna give you this one because it's not so nice, is u squared equals one plus tan x, okay? Then you'd have to rearrange that. Now, that's not so nice for a start. Why would they use u squared? Well, if you put the u squared on the left, the square root and the square cancel out, so it leaves you a u, so that's probably they've done that. Um, I've got to go implicit here because I can't rearrange that. I can't rearrange that for x, so I get inverse tan. Tan inverse tan, by the way, is another word for that. It's arc tan. And I don't want to get into that. Let's get into heavy maths there. So I'm going to do the implicit. So I differentiate that with respect to x and all of that with respect to x. So both sides are balanced. This is called implicit differentiation of different type. Of can't differentiate that with respect to x, but you can with u, so you get 2u. And then all you do is there you stick a du by dx at the end. The variable at the top is u, that, that, just put that on the end, it's like using the chain rule. Differentiate one disappears. Tan, does it go to, I said it was in the formula book, it goes to sec squared x. Okay, again, using that formula book. Du by dx, if you rearrange that, divide by 2u, you get sec squared x over 2u. Okay, put them in. So what we've got here? Well, we've got um, sec squared x, tan x. Now, tan x here can be rearranged. If you rearrange that there, so I'll just write this underneath here, u squared equals 1 plus tan x. I'm trying to get everything in terms of u. Okay, that's all right. Take one off both sides. u squared minus 1 equals tan x. Put it back in there. That's going to give you u squared minus 1. I know I haven't lost that sec squared x, so it cancels in a minute. Put that in here, square root of that, well we know 1 plus tan x was given to me, u squared. Be careful, the way I'm doing it, it's dx by the u, I've got du by the x, you have to take the reciprocal out, so that becomes 2u over sec squared x, that's that bit put in now, and then you've got your du at the end there, okay? I'll just roll that bottom bit out here. Well, is everything going all right from there? Um, made a mistake there, that's my mistake there, it was 2u over sec squared x. Yeah, that's because I've taken the reciprocal of that. Yes, it cancels. Good. What can we do from that? Well, I tend to factorise. I take any. I always can. I always can take constants outside, so the two can go outside. What does that leave me with? Well, it's got u squared minus one. Square root of u is u times u. The, the u, which is u squared, isn't it? Okay, so you've got two. I'll put the u squared to the front. U times u is u squared. U squared minus one du. 
and then multiply the brackets out, leave the two outside the moment. So I've integrated amount of u to the four minus u squared. Integrate that respect to u, so two brackets, add one to the power, divide by the new power, add one to the power, divide by the new power, plus c, multiply it through and replace your u back in that. Now that's not so easy with that, I've had one before, so I'll just rub that off there, okay? And let's put them back in. You get, when you multiply that, 2u to the 5 over 5, that's right away there, minus 2u cubed over 3, plus c. Now, I've got to put the u back into that, yeah? Well, if you rearrange the u squared here, u will be the square root of that, which is 1 plus tan x to the power of half. So if you now interpret into that, it's going to be 2. Put the u in there, which is that. Power on power, e times it. So you get 1 plus tan x, tan x to the 5 over 2, over 5. Do the same here, 2 over 3. u is 1 plus tan x to the half. Power on power, over 3, you get 1 plus tan x to the power, 3 over 2. Don't forget to plus c on the end. Obviously, make it naught because it's still got limits, which I'm coming up to shortly. And that's it on there. Okay. Right, um, now what I want to get to now, so there's quite a lot on this here, I want to look at um, two awkward ones which could come up in the exam, yeah? And the classic one is, well here we go, integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared. It doesn't have to be a 1 there, it could be a many multiples, but well, you'll see with the other question. Now when you get a 1 plus x squared, you might say, well what do I use here? Well the first thing I've got dx, I'm going to make the substitution, so that's du du. You don't like doing that, I keep saying that, then rearrange the x with the substitution amount. Now, what substitution would you ask to come up with this? Um, yes, probably. And the substitution is x equals tan u. You might wonder why. Well, early on I generated an identity from sine squared x plus cos squared x is always 1. If you divide by cos squared, you get tan squared x plus 1 is the same as sec squared x. Now, we know tan and sec, have a, uh, the differential of tan is sec Square, that's x squared, so there's a link between them two. Well, there's your 1 plus x squared. And that's what I'm about to do to bring this in, and then hopefully some cancelling goes off there. So when I put that x in there, you're going to have 1 plus tan squared u, which is similar to that set I've got u instead of x. So if I now do a dx by the u, that becomes sec squared u, which is tan. Put your things in here, and you get this. This is where our identity is being used. 1 plus x is tan squared u, times by, now what have I got? I've actually got dx by du here, so it is in the correct format, so don't think you always take the reciprocal, depends which way it's been given. If it's u being given before x, it's the way round there. So that is actually the same as that, so you times that by sec squared u, du, and then spot this. You've got, what is 1 plus tan squared u? Well, 1 plus tan squared x is sec squared x, so it's the same identity, so it's 1 over sec squared u, and perfect cancelling goes off here, and you get the sec squared is going, integrate 1 du, what happens when you integrate 1? You get u plus c, because if you differentiate u, you get 1, and now you've got to put it back in, which I personally, with these sorts of questions, are probably easier if you've got limits to change the x limits to u limit, because it's awkward to change back in terms of x and keep the x limits there. Now, how do you get u? Well, work backwards, what's the invert? Work back from tan to x, u is tan to the minus 1 of x, which is also named now as arc tan x, so we get used to that. In some courses it might not be called that, so don't, certainly on the um, head Excel course we follow, that would be on there, arc tan x, yeah? Pull that back in there, and you get uh, tan to the minus 1 of x plus c, finish. That's actually uniform, formula book, by the way. So, uh, and the further mass area, but you can't just quote that if it's a five, six marker, you've got to show me the working to get to that answer, okay? Now, let's look at the other one. I did a one plus x squared uh, there. What about the one minus x squared? Well, that goes back to the top identity there. So you'll know what substitution to use there. So I'm gonna make it a little bit harder here. I'm going to go integral of one over, I'm gonna put a four there and x squared. The x, the u, the u. Okay, I've left those identities on the board there. Now, I know it's not 1, but it will be in a minute because I've got to make the substitution there. Now, I know when you do 1 minus x squared, you're going to add, well, so I'll look at the similarity, that thing going to work there. 
If you got there, sine squared x is the same as 1 minus cos squared x, and cos squared x is the same as 1 minus sine squared x. And this is like the 1 minus x squared thing here. However, I've got a problem here. It's not a 1. So I've got to put a number in there so it matches up so I can factorise it. And therefore, I need to do this. I'm going to go x equals, okay, I'm going to go 2 sine u. Why 2? Because when I square 2, I get 4, and that will allow the 4 to be pulled out, so allow this identity to be used. And I'm going to go with sine u. Yeah, I could have gone, I could have gone 2 cos u there, but I'll go with the 2 sine u. It works the same, I want these identities going to get used here. Now when I put that in, first of all, that's a bit more awkward, so let's sort that out separately before putting it all in. 4 minus x squared, square root of 4 minus, now x all that square, that means that times by itself is going to give you 4 sine squared u. If you now take the 4 out, for well, factorising, you get 1 minus sine squared u, and we know now 1 minus sine squared u, or 1 minus sine squared x, is cos squared u. So you get the square root of 4 cos squared u. What happens to that? It's going to be 2 cos u, because 2 cos u times 2 cos u gives you back 4 cos squared u, square root both there, and you've got that. So now I know that is going to go to cos u. So if I just work down here, you will have 1 over. I now know I've got the awkward bit out of the way. I know that goes to 2 cos u dx by the u. Well, I've done that yet, have I? So dx by the u, okay, is going to go to 2. Sine differentiates to cos, so it goes to 2 cos u. Check. Do I do need to do the reciprocal? No, it's already dx by the u, so it stays as it is. And this remarkable cancelling happens here. The 2 and the cos u go, and you're left with 1 to u again, which we know integrates to u plus c, and then you'll have to go back. Now it's a bit more awkward to rearrange, I've got to get that back in terms of x. Again, I will say it again, if this was a limit question, I would go with just the, the brackets around the u and change my x limits to u limits, because it's awkward to change back in terms of x and use the original x limits. So if I rearrange that, x equals 2 sine u. If I divide everything by 2, you get x over 2 equals sine u. To get u on its own, you do inverse sine of x over 2. So you now put that back in there. You've got sine to the minus 1 of x over 2 plus c. And you've got that from there. And there's the answer to that. So if it's a 1 minus x squared or some number, you have to change it to that. 1 minus x squared is either sine or cos. If it's 1 plus x squared, you use the substitution to be x equals tan u because of the two identities I've uh, uh, discussed there. Let's have a look at uh, one with limits, okay? And I'll try and bring an e or a log into it, yeah? Because I'm trying to bring all different functions in here. And then there's a special shortcut at the end for us to do here, or for me to do. Um, let's look at um, what we've got here. Let's have a look. Okay. Let's look at this one. I'm going to put limits on this one. So the first time I've used limits, and I'll explain what I've been saying. So we've got that. Well, the first thing I do, my way of doing it, is put the x to u. If you want to rearrange the dx from the substitution. Now, does the substitution be given here? It may be given. It may not be. Okay. All right, there's two possible substitutions you can use here. The one I'm going to go with in a minute is I'm going to let the bottom bit, the denominator, become 1 plus e to the x. It actually does go. It's a bit awkward. All right, that will go. Another way of doing it is to let x equal log to the base e of u. I'm not going to go with that one. And the reason behind that is when I put it into the e to the x there, you get e to the ln u. And because log e and, uh, e and ln log to the base e, or inversely, they cancel out. There's a little form in your book, so it's worth mentioning this again, form of book. It's that there. So if you now match that up with E, L, N, U, you can see that the X is the, the A is the U there, and the X is the 1, so that matches it up, so you get U, you can see the cancelling going off there. So it does work, okay? So that's another option. I'll go with the top one though. So just to mention that there, throw that in there, another useful result from the form book could be useful. Um, Right, well, we'll go about the limits, let's get the substitution going, yeah? So I need to do a du by dx, 1 disappears, e stays as it is, it's called the natural exponential function, that's why it's very special, the base, the e number 2.7 stays as it is, okay? It's the same, the, the, the actual function itself is the same as the derivative, that's why we put it into lots of problems because of that. So I've got that, so let's put everything in here, well you get 1 over, well we call that all that u, that becomes u, replace that. The x by the u, well it's not the right way around, so I have to turn that around, take the reciprocal of it, from what I said earlier, 
You get that to you. You think, oh, where's this going? So let's have a look. Well, one over, I've got my U there. Now, I've got my E to the X. So I'm cancelling. Well, like I did earlier, you go back to the substitution and rearrange it. Take one off both sides and therefore E to the X of the subject can be replaced by, oops, one way around, put that up. Take one off both sides there and you get U minus one. And this is why I've done this question as one well. over the limits, you get one over U and U minus one. The U. Well that, if you multiply that out, you get one over U squared minus U. And there's no way you can do that. Yeah, there's some there's this trick coming up in a minute where if you take the function at the bottom, take the derivative, there's a shortcut to the chain, but it won't work here because if you differentiate the bottom, you're not going to get a constant number, you're going to get a multiple u. So it's going to work. I'll explain that later. So you're going to have to, sometimes this happens, and it could be a big mark, you're going to have to use partial fraction. You need to split the two fractions, the denominator. So what you need to do there, I've got to hold back a bit here to do this question here. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm just going to rub all that off there so I can take this question on from here. I'm going to have to hold up here, just like your you trig identities were helping you out earlier. I can't get around that, so I'm going to have to use partial fractions. Now you know, because I've got no repeated factor at the bottom, they're both power ones, you can write that as a over u plus b over u minus one. And I need to find what a and b is. By splitting them up, when I've got one over a linear, you get ln or log to the base e, modulus of it actually, for using limits, okay, on there. So, what I've got to do there, well, I've got to match that denominator. So if I times top and bottom of that by u minus one, that will now share the same denominator as that. If I times that one by u, that will share the same denominator again as that. So I'm now left with one over u minus one, is identity the same as a u minus one over u, u minus one plus b u over u, u minus one. Okay, now what you'll notice there is this. Some people just write these down straight away. Is they share the same denominator. When you share the same denominator, you just add the two numerators at the top and you get that. So what you've done, you've got the three lines, by the way, means they're identical, it's in the way of writing. Whatever value of you, you put in that side, it's the same for that. So therefore, the denominators are matching, the numerators are matching. So you can say one is identical to u minus one plus b u. Now there's various ways of doing this. You can multiply it out and compare coefficients in u with constant terms. Obviously, the coefficient of uh, u is nothing on that side, so that'll match the coefficients of u on this side, naught equals whatever, and you can match the constant terms up. Or you can just put numbers in. Okay. Actually, just a bit quickly here, I'll just do. Um, if I did multiply that out. You get a u minus a plus b u. So if I compare coefficients in u, well, there's not one on that side, so that would be naught equals a plus b. If I compare constant terms, that's terms without u, well, that's the one on that side, and on this side, then it's just the minus a. Times by minus one, you get a to be minus one. Put the minus one back into that, and you rearrange it, and you get b to be one. So that's one way of getting your numbers, yeah? a minus one, b equals one. Another way of looking at it, just remove that again here, is to put numbers in, it's an identity. So if I stick in, well the best number to put in that to make that vanish is u equals 1. 1 on the left side, that's vanished, leaves you b times u, which is 1, b is 1. If you now rewrite that now, you can now say that 1 is identically the same as a, u minus 1, b is 1, so it's plus u. So another number on that, or another great number to use now is u equals naught, because it makes things disappear. So if you put naught into the here, yeah, the left hand side is still one. Put naught into that, naught minus one is minus one minus a, plus uh, a u is naught there, minus one, a equals minus, one equals minus a times by both sides by minus one, and you get a to be minus one. I've got my numbers, okay? So from that now, I know that it's A over U plus B over U. So we just come back down the line here. That's what I've got back down to at the moment here. So I was trying to, uh, let's remove that there. Now I know what that is. So I know that my, I split my partial fractions up. I know A is minus one. So when I come to integrate, it's minus one over U and B is equal to one. One over U minus one. Okay, the U. Now, after all that, you can start to Integrate. What does one over u go to? Okay. Well, it's another recognised result. Yeah. The biggest mistake that people do 
is we'll just go back and use this as x is 1 over x. You can't integrate it by standard techniques because if you rewrite that as x to the minus 1 dx, if you add 1 to the power using the standard rule for polynomials, adding 1 to that, okay, and dividing by 1 as 1 plus 1, which is the new power, you get x to the naught over nothing, where well, you can't divide by naught, naught's not defined, so that's a breakdown in the formula. So anything to do with a reciprocal, where the bottom is linear, uh, any constant over a linear one is always going to, it's going to give you log to the base, uh, sorry, log to the base e, okay? Because there's a recognised result, if you get f of x and you differentiate ln x, or log to the base e of x, you get 1 over x, so that means if you integrate, work backwards, 1 over x, you get log to the base e of that. You put the little modulus around that as well, by the way, for limits, especially for limits, yeah? So when I come to that now, that becomes minus ln the modulus of u, okay? That becomes ln the modulus of u. By the way, again, that's linear. If that had been a two, you'd have divided by the two like I was doing before. And if you deal with linear functions inside a composite, that was a, any multiple of the u there, you divide by it, and you know your times by it when you come to differentiate. And you get that, okay? And that's the answer there. Now, at this point, it is no good doing this next bit here. I've got my integration. What I can do though, to make life a bit easier for myself, is write that as ln modulus of u minus one, minus a little of that. And I know when I subtract logs, I divide. So I can write that all of the modulus of u minus one. If you're good with u log, it should be, that saves a lot of time. So I can actually bring it down even better from there, okay? Now, at this point here, I've got that answer here. Now, my limits originally were, I wrote down here, were, if I now go back to that, what I must not do now is this. If you go with those limits, ln2 and um, naught, okay, it's no good putting those two into that because that is not in terms of x. So I'd have to change them in terms of x using the um, substitution I got. Now u equals 1 plus e to the x, okay? And I have to replace the u there by 1 plus e to the x in that, which I could easily do. Now I'm just going to show you, sometimes this is awkward to change back. So obviously they don't apply there. So what I'd have to do, if you want to keep it in that format, you'd have to change the respective x limits to u limits. Now my top limit, as I said there, was x equals ln2. And my bottom limit there was x equals naught. So if I now change it into the corresponding u limit, u would be 1 plus e to the ln2 which is actually 1 plus 2, which is 3. Use your calculator for that. If you remember that result to give you from your formula, e to the ln a equals a to the x. You can match that up there. e to the ln 2, you can see the x is 1, the a is 2, so you get 2 to the power 1, which is 2. So you can match them up from that formula. Here, you'll have u equals 1 plus e to the naught. a to the power naught is 1, so 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So now when I put the 3 and the 2 in there, I've got the correct limits which uh, uh, correspond to my u limits and not my x limits. Putting it in, just quickly, the modulus of, uh, it's going to be 3 minus 1 over 3 minus the modulus of, put 2 in there, that's 2 minus 1 over 2. That gives you, well, the modulus is to 3 take away 1 is 2, so it's 2 thirds. The modulus takes the absolute value, the positive number, which is 2 thirds anyway, so that's 2 thirds minus. 2 take over 1 is a, a 1, 1 divided by 2 is a half, it's already positive so the modulus has meanings there. When you subtract logs, you divide them, so that'll be ln 2 thirds divided by a half, which is going to give you, if you flip that around or use your calculator, you get ln 4 thirds, which I believe is the correct answer, yeah, ln 4 thirds. So you don't have to use x limits, you can keep them like that. And finally, because I've been rather long on this, but it is a big, big topic and I hope it helps uh, a-level students all around the country on this, it'll be nice because this is you know, uh, an area I think can cause some problems. It's the final bit and it is a shortcut method to the chain rule. And this is a special case, so a shortcut to the, sorry not the chain rule, to the, to the, sorry I'll say that again, shortcut to integration by substitution. To integration by substitution. What it is, is this, very useful. If you can write your integral in the form like that, okay, so you get that, 
major result. I've learned this, this is that I often ask people to learn things that are useful. So if your function at the top is the derivative, uh, if the function at the bottom is that it's derivative at the top, or you might have to tweak it slightly, okay, then you have got that format there. Basically, it's come from letting the u equal f of x in the chain rule, and it cancels out, and it gives you a neat result. So it's a shortcut that could save a lot of time with much uh, bigger questions. I'll give you an example. Take that. This is one which works directly, by the way. x squared plus 1. Well, I'll call the f of x the bottom bit, which is x squared plus 1. There's the bit matching. Take the derivative of that, and you differentiate. Times by the power, of take 1, that gives you 2x. That disappears, gives you 2x. Okay, that is therefore bang on in the correct format, f dash of x over f of x, so it already fits it. So what do you do when it's in that format? You take ln, the modulus of the bottom bit, which is x squared plus 1, plus c. Actually, you don't need the modulus there, you can just put normal brackets if you want, because x squared is always greater than equal to 0, so it has no meaning to take the modulus because it's already positive already. And there's your answer to that one there. I'll just take that one away there. Let's look at ones where you have to move them around a little bit, a few more. Um, now take this one here. This is one way it doesn't work. People want to make things work and you can't. So you've got that and that. Now if you think, when you differentiate x squared, it's dropping apart, so you can see the 2x there. So f of x is x squared plus 1. When you take the derivative of that, the 2x squared goes to 2x. That disappeared, but it doesn't give you a 1 at the end, and the 1 is causing the problem, and therefore you can't write it in that form. There's no way you can rearrange it to that form. So it will not work in that case. It's got to be a perfect fit. One way you've got to tweak it slightly, take this bit here, uh, 4x squared over x cubed plus 2. Okay, it's looking good for me when I look at it like that. Because when you differentiate x cubed, it goes to an x squared, which you've got a multiple x squared, you've got no nasty number on the end blocking me. So it looks like it's just one of those which I've got to sort of work around. f of x equals x cubed plus 2. Differentiate that. You get 3x squared. The 2 disappears. So now if you put it into the correct format, you've got the x cubed at the plus 2 at the bottom. You've got the 3x squared at the bottom, at the top, sorry. That's now in f dash of x over f of x form. And well, it's not the same question. So we've got it in the right format. Well, what was there? Well, the 3 wasn't there before. So if I divide by 3, that will cancel that out. But I need a 4, so I put a 4 at the top. Now, if you look at that, I've just I manipulated with a constant outside. They cancel out. 4 times that gives you back the question. But the whole idea was to get that format in here. So it's going to be 4 thirds. Because that's in that form, you take the in the modulus of the bottom bit. So it's 4 thirds in the modulus of x cubed plus 2 plus c. And that's about it. It's not all to do with polynomials. So two more questions quickly. One little show question at the end. And I'll finish this rather uh, long video. Uh, take this one here. Integral of cos x over um, 3 plus 2 sin x. Okay, this works a treat. E is the number one which works very well for this. Provides no numbers blocking there because E doesn't change. Sin goes to cos. So when you differentiate sin, it goes to cos. So you can see the f of x, f dash of x trick there. So if you call the bottom bit f of x, which is 3 plus 2 sine x, f dash of x, differentiate 3 disappears, sine goes to what? Well, you differentiate it cos, so that goes to 2 cos x. Okay, put it in the correct format. So you've got the bottom bit to be 3 plus 2 sine x, which is f of x. The bottom bit, when you differentiate it, gives you 2 cos x. That's now in the form f dash of x over f of x, so you have to use um, that, okay? Is that the same question? Well, that's in the right format, but it's not quite the same question because I didn't have a 2 there, so just take a half outside. That cancelled, run that through, and you've got the same question, but the idea was to bring in that f dash of x there. So it's going to be a half ln the modulus of 3 plus 2 sine x. Don't forget your constant integration on the end unless you're using limits. Um, again, you could have used the integration by substitution. Sometimes these don't work, so a little trick for the, the integration by substitution I've used today. If this isn't working, always try to let the bit at the bottom equal u and it will go. And this does work a trick because this is the shortcut method to that. Okay, on there. And then finally, uh, just to tidy in, because I've tidied everything today with logs and everything, just a little question which could come up there. In your form book, I think if you, they'll ask you to show that might be 10x. Now, it's a new form book, but you're going to have to show it. You're going to have to show a rigorous argument, a maths argument, to get to the answer. Can you show that that equals n the modulus of sec x plus that? 
So I know it's in the form of book, we can't just quote that for five marks. What do you do? Well, this f dash of x comes in. You write sine x, tan x is sine x over cos x, identity. I know this f dash is going to work because cos does go to sine. All right, it goes to minus sine when you differentiate it, but it's the same idea, it's the same uh, multiple at the top. So now, if I let f of x equal cos x, then f dash of x equals minus sine x. So that then gives me um, cos x over minus sine x. That's now in the form f dash of x. Do you change my pen here? My pen's good. That's in the form f dash of x over f of x dx. Okay. Yeah, because if you differentiate that, you get that. And is that the same question? Not quite. You need a minus that sign because the two minuses will give you a positive. But now you've got it, it's minus. When it's in that form, you take in the modulus of the bottom bit, so it's in the modulus of cos x or c. Now, how do you get that answer there? Well, from your log laws, so remember, just to remind you about your log laws, there's a power law. So you bring that back in there, you can write that in the modulus of cos x to the power minus one or c. That can then be written as ln, the modulus of all cos to minus one is the negative power rule, so you can write that as one over cos x, and one over cos x is sec x, so you get in the modulus of sec x plus c. Well, I think that concludes it, so I hope um, that's been useful for all A-level students around the country, and hopefully that's you know, an area which is a concern using identities and using integration by substitution. Thank you very much.